So we just don't have no football for seven months. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your 2023 goals. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. On today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, we have a Super Bowl recap. We have more analysis on Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC in 2024 and then this texas men's basketball team won by 34 points on saturday they are back at it again tonight on the road in lubbock texas should be some tortillas flying and a raucous environment in lubbock against the red raiders all of that and more on today's episode of locked on longhorns part of the locked on podcast network your team every day before we get into texas and oklahoma heading to the sec in 2024 kyle umlang joined the show on saturday to talk about it i'll give some more of my analysis and my opinion on that here shortly we're going to talk about the super bowl recap and if you've been listening to locked on longhorns you know that i was praying on the eagles downfall i was praying that they lost i i, I love some of the players on their team i love jalen hurts what he's been able to do in the nfl and he continued to prove a lot of doubters wrong, even last night. He had almost 400 total yards in the touchdown, did give up a big fumble, return touchdown that put seven on the board for the Chiefs. But I did just more about the Chiefs and what Patrick Mahomes was able to do, right? He didn't have the gaudy stat line, hasn't had a gaudy stat line really in any of the three Super Bowls. The defenses have done a, jo- a good job of really kind of, you know, reining him in. But when it was time to make the plays, he made the plays, right? He didn't have 200 passing yards. He, he, he made the big scramble at the end, kind of all out of Cincinnati Bengals game to, to put it in a position where they would win it for sure. And, you know, the, the call at the end, the James Bradbury hold, you know, some people are saying that you shouldn't make that call, but I feel like we talk out about both sides of our neck sometimes. You know, we say that you shouldn't make those calls at the end of the game, and then we say you shouldn't swallow your whistle at the end of the game. James Bradbury himself said it was a hold. You can see him pull the jersey. You know, by the book, that's a holding call. And, you know, I would have liked to see Jalen Hurts and the Eagles get about a minute and 40 seconds left. But, you know, they got eight seconds left and it just wasn't enough. Right. The Chiefs had already won the game. But, you know, like I said, Patrick Mahomes is just at that level where he just finds a way to win. And it doesn't matter that the Eagles had the more talented roster. It doesn't matter that they had pretty much better players in almost every position group. The Chiefs had Patrick Mahomes. And at the end of the day, that's why he has two Super Bowls in five seasons. So congrats to Kansas City. Um, and thank you so much. I will be letting my Eagles fans, friends, hear it for the next seven months. I don't care what the Cowboys weren't able to do. Misery loves company, and I'm loving the company I have right now in the Eagles being Super Bowl losers. Let's talk about Texas and Oklahoma heading to the SEC in 2024. And I agreed with so much of what Kyle Umlang said on Saturday when you talk about the implications of this. First, from a Big 12 standpoint in the exit this year, to me, this creates a sense of urgency. I already thought that urgency was there. To me, there's even more, right? This year is Big 12 championship or bust for the Longhorns. The Longhorns have not won a conference championship since 2009. They have not won a Big 12 championship since 2009. They have not competed for a Big 12 championship since 2018. Now that you know this is your last year in the Big 12, you have the most talented roster by a comfortable margin in the Big 12. Returning quarterback with 10 of 11 starters on offense, plus the transfers you brought in. Plus what you brought back on the defense and the talent you've added to it in Pekakowski's third year. What's the excuse? This year is Big 12 championship or bust before you head to the SEC. To me, no excuses. Year three for Steve Sarkeesian, most talented roster in the conference. We want to compete in the SEC. It starts competing in what? universally is viewed as a lesser conference in the big 12. Now let's talk about the sec move in 2024. This benefits Texas and is so great for us on so many levels. First, you start with like Kyle Umlang said, the fan experience, look at the home schedule this year for 2023. What's the best game on it? Texas tech. Like what's the game 
that – and, of course, I know a lot of us go to every game we can. But, like, what's the game you look at the schedule right now and you say, I got to be there in DKR this year? BYU, Texas Tech, that's only if they improve on an 8-5 and five season. There's no great games in DKR this year, right? That's going to change in the future. Now you're going to have teams like Florida, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Texas A&M every other year coming to DKR. That improves the fan experience in Austin, Texas at home. For your road games, when you look at it this year, you're playing at Baylor, at TCU, at U of H, right? No disrespect, but how does that compare to playing at Florida in Gainesville in the swamp? The Battle of the Real UT at Rocky Top in Tennessee. At Auburn. At Alabama, which we'll get a taste of this year. But we'll play moving forward. At Death Valley against LSU. At Kyle Field against Texas a and So for the fans that travel to road games, just road games, period, the fan experience will be 10 times better. The games will be 10 times better than what we've been playing in the Big 12. I know some of us hate the slogan. I know some of us don't even want to align with the SEC. We're like, Texas is bigger than all of that, right? We're Texas, you know what I'm saying? No matter what conference we're in, right? We're not chanting SEC nowhere. But, and and the slogan is a little corny. You know, SEC, it just means more. It just means more, right? Think about it from our players' perspective. You recruited this 2023 class, and a large feather in your cap was, you're, by the time you hit the field, you're going to be playing SEC football. Arch Manning's career as a starter, assuming he takes the reins from Quinn Ewers after this year, will be played in the SEC. If everything goes right and he spends three years at the 40 Acres, Arch Manning's last home game, if Texas A&M gets the first one, will be in DKR against the Texas A&M Aggies. You cannot write a script better than that. When Texas gets to the SEC, who will have two bigger rivalry games every year than the Longhorns? In the Red River rivalry against Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl, and then alternating DKR and Kyle Field in the Low Star Showdown against Texas A&M. Who will have two bigger games every year on their schedule, not to mention Arkansas, and renewing that rivalry? than the Texas Longhorns every year. It just means more in the SEC, right? From a recruiting standpoint, when you look at it, Texas has already been able to recruit at the levels of LSU in their heyday, right? Georgia and Alabama now, right? The last three national champions. So you would say that how much can they improve in recruiting? But it's not necessarily about how much you recruit, I mean, how much you improve in the recruiting rankings, right? You may not jump from three to two now or from three to one now, right? But you improve your recruiting footprint because now you can go into the state of Florida and you could tell a kid, if you stay here for four years, you will play football in the state of Florida, even if you come to the University of Texas. You could tell a kid in Mississippi, if you come to the University of Texas, if you stay here four years, you will play football in your home state of Mississippi. You could say that to a kid in Georgia. You can say that to a kid in Kentucky, Alabama, Louisiana, et cetera, et cetera. So you improve recruitment, not necessarily through your recruiting ranking, right? Texas is always going to be able to recruit at a high level, but you improve your recruiting footprint because now that kid in Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, that was on the fence about going too far away from home knows that they can go to the University of Texas and still play in front of their family at some point. Right. This move to the SEC really means everything. And doing it a year early means so much for the Longhorns. Right. We have no business in the Big 12. The Big 12 has no business being this big 16 team super conference while they're trying to celebrate the newbies in UCF, Cincinnati, BYU and U of H. While there's this big cloud hanging over Texas and Oklahoma, knowing that they're doing everything in their power to get to the SEC. Next year, Texas will be playing football. Sorry if this sounds corny. That just means more. I can't wait. But this year, we need to take care of business and get that Big 12 championship. Cough, cough.
Steve Sarkeesian. A quick word from LinkedIn and Built Bar. And then we talk about Rodney Terry and this Texas men's basketball team. They just keep rolling, 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 rolling. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know the success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve those goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and the calories, then you have to try a built bar. We just got through the holidays and I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. It hasn't happened yet, but if you're like me where you want to eat healthier, they don't want to compromise taste, then man, I've got just the thing for you. You have to try Built. What Built Bar Healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you, perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in amazing flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy, only 130 calories, four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. So if you're listening to this and you're hungry, get on your mobile device, get to the office, wherever you're going, get on the computer, go to Built.com, get your Built Bars or head to your local Walmart or Sam's Club before they run out today. I also want to give a shout out to somebody on Twitter. I think it was his name is like R. Jacob Woodyard or something. Sorry, I'm not looking at it right now. He gave me the best compliment that I maybe have gotten in a year of doing this podcast. He said, you know who does the best job at reading their ad reads? Mention me, Jonathan Davis, host of the Locked On Longhorns podcast. And, you know, it's a year in the making, you know, being able to read those almost fluently. Right. So. You know, thank you. It's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. It shows y'all listening pretty deep into the show, too. You know what I'm saying? Y'all making it to that to that ad break. So shout out to R. Jacob Woodyard on Twitter, man. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for that. That made me smile. I shared that with a lot of people, for real. Rodney Terry. I love Rodney Terry. Rodney Terry stand account on Locked On Longhorns. I love what he's done with this Texas men's basketball team. As I said, Rodney Terry was given lemons on December 12th. And since then, he's given us for over two months now, he's given us Chick-fil-A lemonade. He was dropped into one of the most impossible situations you can be put in. And given those lemons, he made Chick-fil-A lemonade. He has four losses as the Texas men's basketball coach. Three on the road against Tennessee. I know that doesn't look great right now, the way Tennessee planned. <laughs> against Iowa State and against the defending national champion, Kansas team. And at home against a Kansas State team, which I know that doesn't look great either the way that they're losing right now. But four very tough teams who were all ranked in the top 15 at the time of the game. Rodney Terry is killing the interview, and Saturday was no different. We said that this team needed to bounce back after a tough loss against a very good Kansas team, but a tough loss nonetheless. Although we were proud of our horns for going 2-1 and one in that stretch against Baylor, Kansas State, and Kansas, two of those being on the road. But we said West Virginia at home on Saturday, a down year, must-win game. Texas Tech tonight on the road in Lubbock, tough environment, down year, must-win game. And to me, we saw our most dominant effort from our Longhorns basketball team on Saturday that we had seen all season, regardless of the coach, regardless of the venue, regardless of the opponent. When you go out there and score 94 points on the offensive end, when all 12 players play, those players I had never even heard of scoring at the end of the game, right? While only giving up 60 points to your opponent, that's a dominant effort, right? When your starters are out of the game with four or five minutes left in a 40 minute game, that's a dominant effort, right? And I don't, I don't care that West Virginia is down. I know we may look at them a little bit differently now. To me, Bob Huggins is a legend. And anytime you can beat that program, that's a feather in your hat, right? Third all time in college basketball victories. That's like, even if the Patriots are five and 11, if I'm a coach and I beat Bill Belichick, I'm going home with a smile on my face. I'm sleeping a little bit better that night. I just beat a legend. Rodney Terry dominated a legend on Saturday in Bob Huggins and that West Virginia team. And, oh, yeah, I love the intensity they play with against Trey Mitchell, huh? You know, we support everybody, you know, doing what's best for them. And 
going on, you know, going to wherever they feel like is the best fit for them and they have the best chance to maximize their career in basketball. We don't want to take any opportunities off the table for anybody. But best believe there's a little pride there. There's a little animosity there. There's a little fire there. There's a little intensity there. You left our program high and dry last year. And you want to go to one of our conference rivals in West Virginia. And now you want to come back to the Moody Center and think you about to have a big game. I'm going to show you something. Timmy Allen and his basketball team got all up in his face. And what do you have? Five turnovers. Half of them is him just throwing the ball out of bounds. He was shook. Right? I love that they brought that intensity to, to Trey Mitchell. Right? You come back in our house, the team you quit on, it's going to be a tough night for you, buddy. Yeah, five turnovers. I think he had like eight points and five turnovers. <laughs> That's not efficient, right? They was in his face, and he was shook from the moment that the ball was tipped, right? Very good game on Saturday from the Longhorns, right? You got 14 from Timmy Allen. Continues to be one of the best mid-range scorers in the country. 16 from Marcus Carr. Didn't play the last four or five minutes. He was very efficient. Serge Abari Rice, 20 points in three of his last four games. If Brock Cunningham is the glue guy, what is Serge Abari Rice? Because he makes the glue plays but can give you 20, right? It's like this team will go as far as Serge Barry Rice is going to take them at this point. Arturio Moore is coming off the bench. He got comfortable, right? Two threes, gave you 12 points uh, off the bench and spot duty. Um, when you look at Dylan DeSue and Christian Bishop, they continue to both be effective, you know, in alternating roles as big men, right? Dylan Mitchell give you activity on the boards, activity on the defensive end. And we saw him get in his bag a little bit with a fadeaway jump shot at the end of the shot clock. So uh, just a really good effort from this Longhorns basketball team. And now I think, Ronnie Terry has a very tough challenge. I know that, like I said, this Texas Tech team is down, even though they beat, I think it was Kansas State on Saturday. They're two and whatever in conference play. This team is reeling. Uh, Mark Adams is reeling, right? I don't know what the the state of Texas Tech basketball is currently, but that's going to be a tough environment nonetheless in Lubbock, right? With or without Chris Beard, they're going to bring the noise. They're going to bring the tortillas. They're going to bring whatever they need to bring, <laughs> right, to try to throw off this Texas men's basketball team. And coming off of a game where you were able to rest your starters at the end, you won a game by 34, it's easy to smell yourself a little bit, right? It's easy to read your press clippings. It's easy to, you know, kind of rest on your lords. And so to me, how this game, how this Texas men's basketball team comes out, to begin the game is a direct reflection of how Ronnie Terry has prepared them for the game. Now, don't come at me if they down double digits. Don't come at me talking about I told you so. And and I said it don't matter what the halftime score is as long as the end score has Texas in the win column. Right. That's still important. But I do think that he needs to get this team to understand that what you did on Saturday against West Virginia means nothing tonight. Right. The score starts off zero zero just because you won against. West Virginia by 34 on Saturday that you don't get to bring any of that here tonight. Right. So I think he needs to come out and make sure that the team is ready to go, because like I said, even though it's a down year for Texas tech, I'm not sure you can go out there, get down double digits and then say, okay, we're still going to win this game. Right. It's going to be a very tough environment. They have a lot of pride. They're going to do everything in their power to win that game against their, I guess, most hated basketball rival, probably their most hated rival period in, in Texas in basketball. So, uh, how this team comes out tonight, I think, will be a direct reflection of how ready Rodney Terry has them. But even if they struggle a little bit early on, which is typical in rough, you know, to rough, tough road environments, geez, rough, tough road environments, you know, especially when you're dealing with 18, 19, 20 year old kids. We've seen Rodney Terry is able to make adjustments and this team is able to come out on top at the end. But I don't even want them to go through that stress tonight. Right? I want them to come out you know, try to beat Texas Tech wire to wire that they did the way, you know, the way they did against West Virginia and continue to keep this team rolling into the Big 12 Conference turn. You know, after what, what is it now, 16, 17 games, this Texas team is still at the top all alone in the Big 12 Conference standings. Once again, we gave Rodney Terry lemons. And since then, over the last two months, he's given us Chick-fil-A lemonade. Rodney Terry continue to kill the interview tonight with a tough win against Texas Tech on the road. Hook up. And thank you, Patrick Mahomes. I'm glad you listened to Locked On Longhorns. God did. Pat did. <laughs> Sorry, Philly. No, I'm not. <laughs> Hook them. <laughs>